Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the SNRE seminar today. I uh, hope things are going well as we wrap up the semester. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Sergio Padilla Paz. He'll be presenting today from Campeche, Mexico, obviously via Zoom. He's not in Gainesville, but uh, he defended his dissertation a couple of weeks ago. He will be coming to attend commencement, and I'm going to be extremely proud to uh, escort him across the stage as his degree is formally com conferred, but he has, he's completed all the requirements. So uh, it's been a while. Sergio uh, was in the, getting, working on his PhD in the past and for a variety of reasons had to uh, step back but he's, uh, he's certainly persistent and, uh, and com committed to getting this work done. And he came back and we got him re-enrolled again recently. And he now has finished up his PhD. And today he's going to be telling you about one chapter of the research he conducted on Morlet's crocodile in uh, Mexico. So Dr. Padilla ba Paz, I will turn the floor over to you now. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Um, I'm gonna turn out my camera because my internet connection is, is not good here. But, um, anyway, uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank you all for your attendance today and for giving me the opportunity to present here in the SNRE seminar part of my research. Thanks to Dr. Johnson for, for introducing me. And as Dr. Johnson says, I am Sergio Padilla from Campeche, Mexico. And I'm interested in applied interdisciplinary ecology in my home country, working primarily with aquatic reptiles on their wildlife management theory approach. As a wildlife manager, I realized that wildlife population ecology is an important part, but also the human component is a relevant one. Manager cannot ignore this and have to understand at least the principles and methods to study the human component of wildlife conservation. With this order of ideas, today I will present my part of my investigation of more or less crocodile conservation entitled Human Dimension of More or Less Crocodile in, in Campeche, Mexico. I hope you will find this interesting. Um, I think this is okay. Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, the information, the information I'm presenting here is part of my dissertation, which is grounded in wildlife management theory, covering two important elements of the supply science, population ecology and human dimensions. Following this framework, my work was designed to contribute to a better understanding of the dynamics of crocodile populations and the values of people people have to work crocodiles in rural communities in Campeche, Mexico. In the best case scenario, this information will be useful in the planning of conservation strategies for more or less crocodile. <clears throat> in the slide, we can see the, the chapters of my dissertation and I have a, two, comp two major components, the population ecology component and the human dimension component. Okay, my basic question here in, in for this part of my of, of my research, uh, my first question aims to explore how is the interaction between villagers and crocodiles. The second question aims to explore the attitudes people people have toward crocodiles, and the third question is related to elucidate the intrinsic values people have in relation to the moralist crocodile. Exploring this question, I pretend to have baseline information that contributes to understand the human crocodile interaction and to the conservation management and the possibility of sustainable harvest of this species in Campeche, Mexico. Okay. Uh, human dimension of wildlife focuses on understand human actions toward wildlife. One approach to do this is the wildlife value orientation framework was developed by several authors uh, in the 19s and the 2000s. This framework 
is grounded in social psychology principles and identify two basic values toward wildlife, domination and mutualism. According to several authors, wildlife value orientation could predict attitudes, norms, and behaviors toward wildlife. Most of the research in, in this, uh, with this approach has been conducted in developed countries, such as USA and European countries. However, there is some evidence that this approach can be applied in other cultural contexts. Wildlife value, value orientation helps to organize the diversity of beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors toward wildlife in a given area. It has cross-cultural application uh, because there is some evidence that this approach can be applied in other cultural contexts like Thailand, Mongolia, China, Central Africa, among others. I would like to mention that uh, very few studies have been conducted in this regard in Latin America. The two basic wildlife value orientation are domination and mutualism. But from these two predominant orientation, four types of wildlife value are classified. Domination, mutualist, pluralist, and distance-oriented values. People with a domination orientation have utilitarian and perceived wildlife as only useful for human benefit. Conversely, people exhibiting ex the mutualism, mutualism oriented value believe that wildlife have rights and deserve care and protection. And on the other hand, people with pluralistic orientation have both domination and mutualism values and distance oriented lack of this well-formed wildlife value orientation. I mean, uh, domination and mutualism. In regards to crocodiles, like mammalian carnivores or large mammalian carnivores, negative perception and interaction toward these animals often leads people to intentionally kill them. And commercial value is also a trigger to hunt and kill these animals. In Mexico, in Mexico, more or less crocodile has historically been hunted for the commercial value of its hide. For this reason, 15 years ago, Mexican government, almost 15 years ago, Mexican government forbade the hunting of and trade of crocodiles. However, poaching, habitat degradation are still threats to these reptiles. But not everything is negative. In some cultures, like Mayan culture, crocodiles are a high valuable species. And following these ideas, in this chapter, in this investigation, I explored the intrinsic values that trigger the attitudes toward crocodiles in a rural context in Latin America, specifically in Campeche, Mexico, on the Yucatan Peninsula. This is my target species, is Crocodilus moreletti, also called uh, Morelet's crocodile. Here in Mexico, we, we call it uh, Cocodrilo de Pantano. It is a medium-sized crocodile that inhabit wetlands along the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, and Northern Guatemala. As I mentioned, it, it was hunted for commercial purposes in the past, but currently it is a protected species, species under Mexican legislation, legislation and international regulations. This is my study area. Uh, Campeche State is located on the on the Gulf of Site, on the Gulf of Mexico side of the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, what is this? Thing? It's right here. Uh, in, and the pictures uh, sh shows the habitat where we can find the crocodiles here in, in Campeche most as freshwater habitats. And Hampolol is this one, it's a freshwater stream. Moku is a, Moku Lake is a like two square kilometers uh, of area lake and Silvituk. All of this uh, habitat had uh, three rural, rural villages associated to, to, to them. I don't know. 
Uh, this is a general view of a rural village in Campeche, in the Yucatan Peninsula in general. Most of these villages do not have paved roads, and most of the people live in Mayan style houses and preserve the Mayan culture. However, in Silvictuk village, people from the center and north of Mexico migrated to this area around 15 years ago, and there is a mix of cultures in this village. All of the rural communities have a well-established group of the population in their surroundings. surroundings. Okay, how I do this, this, this investigation? I apply stand, uh, a standardized questionnaire in the mentioned rural village in Campeche. The questionnaire includes questions with a five-point scale. Uh, the database was analyzed with descriptive statistics and some questions were classified and coded for further analysis for to do the exploratory factor analysis. I tested the, da the data for assumption of normality Bartlett test of sphericity and kaiser major olkin test to determine the factorability of the data. I mean, uh, to, to, to know if my data was uh, uh, good to, to do the exploratory factor analysis. I conducted this analysis, factor analysis, to reduce and group the items into interpretable factors and to identify the latent variables in wildlife value orientation for the survey communities. Also, I perform a reliability analysis to evaluate the internal consistency across items to determine if items were measuring, measuring the predicted Latin variable. And uh, the results of my investigation in, in regards to the, the use of the crocodile by the villagers in the, in the in Campeche, in Silvic, two people attributed more uses to, the, to these reptiles, followed by Miguel Colorado and finally Hampolol. In Miguel Colorado, most people think crocodiles can serve as food, while in Hampolol, more people think the crocodile can be subject to commercial activities. Is is este, it medicinal, medicinal use was not mentioned in this study. However, in my experience, Mayan communities know some medicinal uses of crocodiles and reptiles in general such as they use the oil uh, for the treatment of respiratory disease, just to mention one example. But particularly in this, in this, in this investigation, no, no, nobody mentioned the medicinal use. And, and, the, and the core analysis for, of, of this research, the exploratory factor analysis, uh, suggests the extraction of three factors uh, as the Latin variables. It means the, the, the points above the gray line uh, after the, uh, the empirical case criterion script plot. This, the table shows the identified three factor and the respective loadings after exploratory factor analysis. Obtained factors were interpreted and labeled as factor one, and I name it a coexistent management factor and includes the items related to mutualist value towards crocodile, but also include some domination value items. Factor two, I, I label it as risk factor, groups the items associated with the threat, danger perception of, and the factor three, I label it harvest, gather the item of domination value primary. All three factors were internally consistent, uh, which indicated that its items were measuring the intended Latin variable. This is the diagram of the exploratory factor analysis showing the interaction between the Latin variables. We can see the arrangement of the question group of the question group in three factors. The factor two, the factor one, and the factor three. And uh, with the information generated in the exploratory factor analysis, I can elucidate the wildlife value orientation among, among the three villages. In Silvic 2, participants have the highest risk perception, factor two, and are willing to harvest crocodiles on their utilitarian scope because they score high on denomination value, or domination value and low on mutualism. Factor three, where, uh, whereas in Hampolor, 
people are more aligned with factor one because they score high on mutualism and low in domination. And in Miguel Colorado, participants had similar risk perception as Hampolot, but had lower mutual uh, domination and domination values. I think this is and discussion and conclusions. This is, to my knowledge, the first study of this kind in the region. Findings reveal the heterogeneity within, a, within and among the three studied communities, which have implication of crocodile management. I identified three major value categories, dominionistic, mutualistic, and risk-based. In the rural community surveys, these value categories are mixed as mixed and don't skew towards one value. Probably the subsistence and cultural values influence people's perception, perceptions. Similar results have been reported in Philippines and Africa. People that have low risk perception of crocodiles also have positive attitudes toward crocodiles. This is similar that the reported in Florida in a study with American crocodile. I think that changes in economic activity and modernization can trigger values, a value shift in the perception toward crocodiles here in, in rural Campeche, because new generation have more access to internet and information that may, and this information may be influencing their perception about wildlife in general, and particularly with crocodiles. The result of my investigation here provide a useful insight into rural communities' wildlife values and demonstrates how this approach may be applied in a rural Latin American context for a large and potentially dangerous reptile, and probably for all other large vertebrates. And I think this is the last one. Yeah. And this is uh, my research in, in these human dimensions. Uh, I would like to thank to my advisor, Dr. C. Johnson, and the committee members, Dr. Nia Molar Morales, Dr. Matthew Cohen, and Dr. Mark Hostetler. Uh, Thanks to everyone to, for your interest here. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, certainly, <clears throat> we would have time for questions if anybody has any. I don't know how that's going to work. Allison, I suppose you can see people raising their hand that I can't access. Yes, yes, I can do that. And I'll also uh, look in the chat as well. Thank you. But she's looking, Sergio, can you go back a couple slides, Sergio, to that bar graph? Something I know we, yeah, right there, something that we talked about in your defense. What, how do you explain those apparent differences in the, uh, the value orientations of the different villages? What do you think can, you know, what do you think the reasons for those differences are? Well, I'm thinking that the, the, the heritage they have, I mean, because in Hampolol, they mostly Mayan, Mayan people, Mayan heritage, but in Silvituk there, are, there, there is a mix of people from the center of the north, north of Mexico with other heritage and, and other uh, use of natural resources, including the crocodiles. Uh, I, this is, I think this is the main differences between the three, the three results among the, the village. And I see Ernesto has uh, his hand raised. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Sergius, for your work and your presentation. Uh, I work with uh, similar subjects, but more related to place. And I'd like to know if you, if in any of these communities, uh, uh, there is tourism related to the crocodiles, and if you include this this variable in your in your study, like. Uh, if maybe the communities can have like some income from tourism or this could change a little the perception and attitude. Do you assess any, anything related to this? Uh, no, uh, no. Any, in, in, in any village, there, there is a tourist activity in regard to the crocodiles. In, in Miguel Colorado and in Campolol, there is some water bodies, some aquadas we call we call it, we call it here. We just uh, people go there and uh, to take a bath, but there is no uh, a 
a touristic activity with in regards to crocodilians but the the this uh, investigation can can uh, elucidate where in, in which village are more prone to, to develop this activity i think so I mean, I, i'm thinking that hapolol could have a good activity in in regard to touristic activities with crocodilians because they they're more uh, mutualistic than the other ones i have a question also <laughs> Hello, Sergio. Um, nice to meet you. I'm also working in a similar environment and from Mexico, so good job. <laughs> and yeah, so I guess my question is just most like related to what you mentioned in the end about, you know, this, this value shift in the attitudes. <clears throat> and, you know, just because I like the location of your study area, how do you think this, like, you know, the development that is coming with the Mayan train a infrastructure project is gonna affect these attitudes and beliefs and you know i think it's great that you actually got to measure this before the, the you know all this development like gets there but yeah just wondering if you know you think this is going to be impacted this these attitudes hey hello um my train is in everywhere I, I, even here in <laughs> it's very similar well my training in in these localities it's just uh, the railroad pass to, to there, but there is no station, there is nothing, uh, there is no development uh, around the Mayan train project, just the, the, the railroad pass through to these villages. And I, I think in uh, the, are, are you asking about the value shift? If you think that this kind of project can change this value towards the wildlife, I think yes, because they, they have more information, not only for the internet access, the new generations have, uh, but also with all these people are coming to build the railroads and and, and have meetings with, with the people, with the villagers, explaining the, the project and explaining the, the pros and cons of the projects. And there is always the question about what happened with the wildlife and, and the project, no? And it, it, it is a really polemic project here in, in the Yucatan Peninsula that, and, but in general terms, uh, the information they will bring to the people will, will affect the, I think will, will, will affect the, the values they have to, toward the wildlife. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, thanks. Sergio, could you, since you have a potential Mexican future colleague there, could you talk about now with you finished your PhD, what your what your plans are? I, I believe you've told us you're still you're interested in uh, continuing this human dimensions work and doing crocodilian outreach uh, uh, in the future in your home country there. Yeah, well, my, my my future plans here is continue with my uh, interdisciplinary approach, ecology approach using the wildlife management and conservation theory. I mean, applying the, what I know as a biologist of population ecology, but also continue exploring this human dimension with, I'm not a sociologist and it was difficult to me to understand the, the links be, between the people and the, and the wildlife. And this wildlife value orientation, I think is a good approach to, to explore it. I, work in, I am working in the University of Campeche and I'm planning to start uh, extension activities with wildlife here in, in Capeche, including obviously the human dimension and the outreach activities, and start to, to work close to this polemic project like the Mayan train. And, and others here. So there's a question from Pablo in the chat. Um, are there more crocodilian species in the area? In that case, are there different attitudes to different species? It's a good question. No, here in Capache only have a uh, crocodilus moreletti. In the rest of the Yucatan Peninsula, we can find the crocodilus acutus, but they are located more in the Quintana Roo side, on the east side of the 
of the Yucatan Peninsula. There are some hybridization, but we recognize mostly uh, as uh, more or less crocodile here in Campeche. But, or uh, uh, in the communities I made this survey. Because Crocodilus acutus is mostly a, a, a marine uh, a habitat crocodile, and more or less crocodile likes most the, the freshwater habitats. Do you have any guesses, Sergio, about how people's attitudes might be? I know Crocodilus acutus can get considerably larger uh, of them. You think there's people, they fear them, or can you just, spe I don't know if it's total speculation, just do your best, but what, what do you think might be going on in terms of attitudes compared to Morlets and with uh, uh, Crocodilus acutus? Well, uh, Crocodilus acutus here in Mexico are distributed in two, to me, two different areas. One is the touristic area of Cancun, with all the lagoons associated to the hotels and, and all the, the bays associated to the, to the touristic activity. And the other part is a natural reserve, a biosphere reserve, is called Siancan. So in, in Siancan, there is no, no too much villages. I mean, there's just one village I can remember now. Uh, I mean, there is no people. And the perception of them is more like uh, the, uh, I, I, Mayan perception, I think it will be similar to, to the findings here with, with Moreletti. But in regards to the Cancun area and, and Crocodilus acutus, they probably, per, the, the perception probably will be more similar to Miami, to Florida area, uh, South Florida area, which is the uh, uh, distrib uh, uh, major distribution of Crocodilus acutus in, in the USA. But this, I, I think that they will be different. I, I will. I will expect two different perceptions about the, the same species in the same state, I mean, the same Quintana Roo state. Are there other questions? Okay, well, Sergio, thank you so much for doing your presentation. That was really great. Um, and it was really interesting to uh, learn more about that. And I, uh, I am a sociologist. So if you ever want to get in touch with me, if you ever have questions or anything like that, uh, I'd be happy to chime in.